Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I want to give some tips and advice for taking the PowerPoint 2019 exam. Now I want to caution you, people tend to take this test a little lightly, but it's going to be more difficult than you probably think it's going to be. The content is not so difficult. The wording of the questions though, take it to another level. You're going to want to read very carefully on this exam so that you carry out the task exactly as they want you to carry it out. I want to encourage you to take a peek at the 2019 exam page for PowerPoint because it's going to list out all of the domains for this exam and everything that you could be asked to carry out on this exam. Now, this exam is going to be 50 minutes long. Certiboard lists that you could have anywhere from five to eight projects. And within those projects, you could have anywhere from one to six tasks to complete. From my experience, the sweet number is you're probably going to be asked about 35 task questions. On the exam, as you're working through it, from my experience, that first project is often the most difficult. I think Certiport's trying to trip you up, trying to get you discouraged, so that when you face the other projects, you start to second guess yourself a little bit and you don't do as well. So keep that in the back of your mind. From my experience, the first one is often the most difficult. But if you don't know how to do something, just mark it for review and move on. Don't spend so much time on one task question that you can't finish the entire exam. And then once you get through all of the projects, you'll be able to go back to the task questions that you mark for review and then try and figure them out if you have the time. Let's go ahead and jump into PowerPoint. One of the first places that you should visit as you begin preparing for this exam is the PowerPoint 2019 exam page. Now there's actually two of them. One was created by Certiport. The other was created by Microsoft. For the most part, the information is the same. I prefer the Certiport just because visually it's more appealing. Currently, I'm on the Certiport webpage, and if I scroll down, I see here the PowerPoint associate for 2019. If I click on Download Exam Objectives, it downloads a PDF, and if I open it up, we can see here it kind of gives a little bit of an overview of what's expected of you before you take the exam. And then as I scroll through, we can see that this exam is going to have five different domains and it lists out each skill that you should know before you sit down and take the exam. If I go to the Microsoft page, the information on this web page is the same as what can be found on the Certiport page. If I click on Download Certification Skills Outline, the only difference is it's an award doc and each of the points are bullets. You should note that these web pages are subject to change and they have changed recently. So if the pages look just a little bit different, it's just because they've updated the page. But the information on both of these websites are very valuable as you begin to prepare because it tells you everything you could be asked to perform on this exam. As you begin to prepare for this exam, the first thing that you should note are new features or things that were added for this exam. Specifically, there are two things that I think you should be made aware of and that you should make sure that you know before you sit down and take this exam. The first thing is the slide zooms. If I go to the insert tab, I'm in my links section. If I click the zoom drop down, I have a summary zoom and I have a slide zoom. There's also a section zoom. In this video, I'm not going to go in a lot of detail for this, but if I click on summary zoom, I have the option of choosing slides that I want to add to the summary zoom. If I click insert, They've been added, and if I click on them, I have the Zoom Tools Format tab. You should be familiar with doing some of these new Zoom features. And for this, we only looked at one Zoom type, but each of the Zoom features has different sections and different abilities. So you should practice with using each one of those. The other new feature that was added for 19 was the ability to insert 3D objects. So if I scroll down to my 10th slide, I have inserted a 3D object. Now you can insert these 3D objects just like you would a picture or a shape. It's in the illustrations group. You want to click the 3D models drop down and then you'll have the ability to map through your folders. Let me go ahead and open this up because this brings up a good point. On the exam, whether you're inserting this or you're inserting some other type of file, you should be familiar with this left side, the folders underneath this PC. For this 3D object, it was actually on my desktop, but maybe for the exam, it could have told you to look in your 3D objects or your documents or maybe your pictures. You should be familiar with these folders and how to navigate from one folder to the next. We'll go ahead and click cancel. The 3D objects are easy enough to insert. 
with it selected, I had the 3D model tools format tab. And the main thing in this section that's a little bit different is our 3D model views. So if I wanted to view it from the top, once I find it, I can select it. And notice that my perspective changes for that 3D object. In addition to that, you have things like add alt text. You have some alignment options. You can change the height and width. And of course, if you need to get even deeper into the advanced settings, we can click this size dialog launcher box and I'll get a whole lot more over here on the right. We'll go ahead and close out of this. Now that we've talked about new features, something that I want to encourage you to do on this exam is to read the task questions carefully. The content for this exam is not difficult. The wording of the task questions is a completely different story. That's what makes this exam so difficult. You want to be careful to read the task question carefully. I have a tendency of wanting to speed read through task questions, but that's going to hurt you on this exam. You want to slow down, read the task question carefully. You might need to read it a second time to make sure you fully understand the task question. You might have to unscramble the task question. So maybe part B is what you need to do first, and then you can move on to part A, and then finally part C. One of the tricky parts of this exam is that they're not going to call a sheep a sheep. They're going to be vague in how they word something, and you're going to have to know, oh, they want me to apply an animation to this and change the direction. They're not going to just say apply an animation and do this and then do this. Read the question, make sure you fully understand what they're asking you to do, and then move on. With reading the task question, an important part of this exam is to be able to look at your presentation and understand what's going on on the slides, with the content, what the presentation's about. And if you can do that, that's going to help you carry out the task questions because it's just going to make sense. I'm going to throw up a graphic of what the exam interface looks like. And something that was different for this exam is that in the past, there was a project overview. And that is still the case for this exam. But what was different is that project overview used to have its own tab. Now, the project overview is listed over the first task. For the most part, you can glaze over the project overview. It'll help with your understanding of what you're doing for this project. But it's not always very helpful. Don't spend a lot of time on that project overview. Some advice I'd like to give as you're working through this is if you're not immediately sure how to carry out a task question or you're not even sure what they're asking you to do, mark it for review and move on. The worst thing that you could do is spend 10 minutes on one task question and only leave yourself 40 minutes to carry out the 34 or so task questions that you're going to be expected to carry out. You might not finish if you spend too much time on one task question, so pace yourself. If you're not immediately sure how to do it, I would encourage you to mark it for review and move on. And then if there's time at the end of the exam, you'll have the option to go back and look at the task questions that you marked for review. While you're working on the exam, if you try to do something and it doesn't look right, it's probably not right. That's okay. I would encourage you to just do control Z, undo what you've done and try something else. I just mentioned control Z. I would encourage you use your keyboard shortcuts on the exam. Sometimes on a presentation like this, there's 10 slides. And while there's not a whole lot on the slides I have on my screen, finding information can be difficult. Don't be afraid to use your keyboard shortcuts like control F to find a specific word or phrase. It's going to be super beneficial to you if you can quickly navigate through a document. For this exam, you should know the difference between inserting a slide from outline and reusing slides. That's a topic that my students always get confused with. Let's go in and insert from outline after slide eight. So we're going to select slide eight. Now, when I bring in those new slides, it's going to put those slides after slide eight. We're on the home tab. We're in the slides group. I'm going to click the new slides drop down. And what we're going to do is slides from outline. In my folder, all I see is my word file. If you're looking to insert from outline, some file formats that you should know are the word file, which is a .docx. You can do a text file, which is a .txt and you can do an RTF file, which is a rich text format. You can insert all three of those files when inserting from outline. We'll go ahead and select that and click insert. And notice it went ahead and it inserted my slides after slide eight. If I was gonna reuse slides, that would be another PowerPoint. So let me go ahead and put my cursor here after 15. I'm on the home tab, I'm in the slides group. I'm gonna click new slides. And this time I'm gonna select reuse slides. That opens up this pane on the right hand side. If I click browse, I'm in that same folder that I pulled that outline word file. Notice it's not listed here. On the exam, if you're looking to do outline or reuse slides in the file that you're looking for is not there, 
you chose wrong. Go back and try the other option and you should be able to find your files. We'll go ahead and click reuse slides, click open. On the right hand side, it loaded in the slides from that presentation. To simply add the slides, all I need to do is click on it once and it will place that within our presentation. Something to note, because what I'm bringing in is different from the presentation that I have is this button right here, keep source formatting. If I check that and then I click on that same slide, notice it went ahead and brought in the formatting from the original PowerPoint. We'll go ahead and close out of this. Let's go ahead and look at the backstage view. If I click file, there's a lot in here that you could be asked just within this info section. On the right hand side, if I'm asked to add a tag, all I would have to do is click here and type in the word that I need to. For this, we'll go ahead and type in PowerPoint. I want to caution you here. Something that my students tend to want to do is to add a space after this word. You don't want to type more than what they have in the task question. That will get you marked wrong. You should also pay attention to words that are capitalized and words that are lowercase and type it exactly as you see it. For this exam, that is one thing that I felt like they did well. It was very obvious as to what I needed to type. If you don't see a property that you need, you should note that you can always click show all properties and it will show you more of what's going on. While we're in this backstage view, you should be familiar with the inspect presentation. And there are three different options. You can inspect a document for hidden properties such as things like metadata. You can remove headers. You can check for accessibility, and this is for checking the presentation for content that might be difficult with people with disabilities. And then you can check for compatibility issues. This will check for things that might hinder a previous version of PowerPoint to open with the features that are loaded. You should be familiar with the print section. In this window, there's really a lot of features that you could be asked to do. You could print all of your slides or sections, or you can do a custom range. You can print full pages or you can change that to note pages, outline. You can have nine horizontal, and then you have some features down below. If I click here, you have collated versus uncollated. Collated means it would print the entire presentation before it moved on to a different copy. Uncollated would be this. If you needed to print five copies of this presentation, for uncollated, it would print five copies of page one before it would move on to five copies of page two, and then five pages of slide three. Another thing that you should know are the different save options. Whether you're clicking save as, you should know how to click browse to navigate to your different folders under this PC. You also have the export feature because you could be asked to create things like handouts. Of course, you can create a PDF XPS document or you can click change file type where you'll have a few more options. And of course, these windows will bring up some of the same features you can find on the save as section. We'll click out of the backstage view. Something that's not difficult to carry out on this exam are transitions. If I go to the transitions tab, if I click on slide 14, I could easily click the morph transition to apply that to this slide. That's not a problem. But what some people don't realize that they can do is go to the effect options and we can change some of the effect options. You also have the ability to add sound. You can change the duration. You have some advanced slide features such as on click or after a certain amount of time and then you can click apply to all. Same thing with animations. If I wanted to apply an animation to this chart, if I select it, I can click fly in. But again, I have some effect options. One of the things that will be beneficial to you is the animations pane when working with animations. Let me go ahead and add another animation to this so that you can see now that I've added two animations, I can change my animation order and notice one becomes two. I can change some of the options by clicking this arrow and going to the effect options, which gives me a new dialog box. There's really a lot of features within here. And if you're not familiar with a lot of these features, it could be difficult for you. Speaking of animations, I've gone ahead and gone to the slide with my 3D object. With that selected, under the advanced animation, you should note that you do have some 3D animations that you can apply. and that information might prove useful to you on this exam. In addition to working with things like transition and animations, you should be familiar with working with things like tables, pictures, shapes, smart art, charts. You should note that if you click in things like this table right here, that you get special tabs at the top. For this, I have two new ribbon tabs. For some, it might be one, and for others, it might be three. But on the exam, you should be familiar with this because many of the things that you're going to be asked to do can be found on these ribbon tabs. And so for this table, you can do things like add a total row. You can change your styles. 
And on the layout tab, you can add or remove columns and rows. You can split cells. And that's going to be different from things like this shape, where I have a lot of color and adding text. You have the alt text ability. I suppose a big thing for shapes is that you'd be able to align the shapes, or you can bring shapes forward one step or all the way to the front. And same thing with back. You can also do that with things like pictures. If I go to this slide with my smart art, I love this little text pane pop out. Now you can access that from the Smart Art Tools design tab and click text pane. But I love this because it's easier to type here sometimes than trying to click within shapes. And again, I have a lot of features within this ribbon, regardless of if it's tables or Smart Art or whatever it is that you feel comfortable navigating through the ribbons. Much like tables and Smart Art and charts, you should be familiar with modifying and playing with audio and video in PowerPoint. If I click on my audio source right here, I get the audio tools format tab, which I can change some of the presentation settings, but I also get some playback settings here. And here I can change my fade in and fade out. For audio options, I can hide during the show. I can change some of the start settings. We can play across slides. That's gonna be important. With video, I have a lot of the same features with the presentation of what we're looking at. But again, with the playback section, I can trim my video. I can have it keep playing after it gets done. A key to this exam is that you feel comfortable navigating through the ribbons and playing around with the features. And then my last little bit of advice for you on this exam is don't be afraid to dig. Sometimes you need to go to one of these dialogue launcher boxes to really carry out the task that it's asking you to do. Notice that when I clicked on that for font, I get a lot of effects that I didn't have options to before like all caps or small caps. I also have some character spacing. Now I use font, but as you can see, there's one for paragraph, there's one for drawing. Just make sure that you're not afraid to dig around to try and find some of the features that they're asking you to do. Before you take this exam, again, I wanna encourage you, take a deep breath. Make sure you have a clear mind as you begin taking this test. Make sure you visit the exam page for this test. That way, none of the skills that you could be asked to carry out trip you up. Make sure you read those questions very carefully. That way you don't miss anything. And then finally, you want to make sure that you are familiar with the features of PowerPoint, playing around in the different ribbons, opening up some of the advanced features. And I wish you the best as you take this exam.